Hey there, this is Heather Smith with BarrelRacingTips.com and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Pistols Progress. I'm just coming through the pasture gate this morning. We're just going to take a leisurely little stroll as I continue to cool him out. So we had an amazing weekend, got uh, more feedback to prepare for our big weekend next weekend. So. Um, as accountability partners, I would love for you to let me know in the comments how we, your weekend went with your horses. As many of you know, I've been checking in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 8.30 Central with you to um, give you a look behind the scenes at what we're working on to prepare for Pistols come back to competition. This has actually been a work in progress since the 1st of June, and so I'm really excited for where we're at. I've just been working on conditioning him since then, and in the past few weeks, we've gone to a couple of barrel races to just get him back in the swing of things. So, but um, I would love to hear how your weekend went, and I would love for you to tell me a win. And as I always say, um, we can always find a win, even if our results didn't align with what we had intended. Um, that means that we learned something, and that's always a win. So I've been was kind of rushing to get Pistol's um, post ride routine finished so I could tune in live here with you on the dot on time. And what that looks like for us, by the way, right now, Pistol just had a shower. I'll uh, change the view a little bit. So um, he just had a shower. And our arena feels amazing, by the way, those of you who noticed that uh, we had the rocks removed from it over the weekend, so it was really amazing to ride at home for a change today. <laughs> Saved me a little bit of time this morning, but then I was busy making, um, I even got an early start as well, but then I was making some equipment changes before a ride that was uh, based on the feedback I got this weekend. So right now, since I'm um, finishing his uh, cooling out on this hard ground out in the pasture, I put his padded hoof boots on. So he has a little bit of cush, just a little bit easier on his joints. He's got his ice boots on. I put a little like a liniment brace um, and uh, sponged him down with that after I rinsed him off. And then when we finish walking, I'll put some mud on his uh, front legs also. So. Um, you can see in the background, if you look really closely, right there is the humongous pile of rocks that came out of our arena over the weekend. So we're super excited. The arena feels amazing and it is, it was really awesome um, to, for Pistol to feel so much more. He felt uh, at times when I was asking him to stop, he felt more confident because like he could his form was better because he could trust the ground um, and it wasn't too hard. It had a little bit of give to it and it was consistent. So the good, the good footing can just work wonders for our horses, um, not just their confidence, but their soundness. So basically I'll tell you a little bit about how the weekend went and um, the adjustments that we're making for the final preparations coming into next weekend. Hey, Sharla. Awesome, great to hear. So, love uh, hearing uh, re reports from you. So, um, I'll talk about, you mentioned the first barrel. So that was one of the eye-opening things. Um, the first barrel um, over the course of the years previous uh, has not necessarily been pistol specialty. And so, um, I was, uh, I really put him to the test in our, uh, we did one pretty fast exhibition over the weekend we did two others that were a little bit slower and um, anyway he was when I asked when he knew it was time to get ramped up I could tell that mentally he just was not hooked on the first barrel he definitely had more run on his mind than rate and the thing of it is is that um, our horses are always so I'm actually looking at um, changing the headgear that I'm gonna ride him in as compared to what I've ridden him in in the past and that is honestly like we're always evolving as riders and trainers and our horses are constantly evolving. Like he feels better and is firing harder than I think he ever has. 
And so those are all considerations, like nothing is stagnant, you know, everything's evolving and changing. And so that means that we have to be aware of that and making adjustments as well. So um, I've been making some considerations for headgear. Today, one of the things I did, which will be really helpful to you for helping um, get your horses really mentally um, hooked and focused on uh, the actual first barrel instead of focus a little bit too much on run. Hey Sharon, hey Becky. Is um, So what I did is that I just kind of pointed pistol in the direction of the first barrel. He just um, offered to s slow down and stop. <laughs> like it was his suggestion. Can we just rest? Normally, <laughs> normally I wouldn't... Um, you know, I guess we make exceptions based on feel sometimes to the the uh, specific rules we have. And I just got the feeling that he was like, hey, look, can we just like rest for a second? So I'm like, okay. Sometimes we have to be um, aware of when we must insist on respecting what we're asking and other times when we need to respect what they're asking. So anyway, back to the first barrel, um, what I did is I just kind of shaped him up and sent him in the direction, the general direction of the first barrel, and I really kept my body and my focus in position to turn it, but then I just totally left him alone, like with my hands, I didn't direct him with my legs, I made sure I stayed off of him, and he just kind of went off into la la land, and so I really, um, got into him like with my leg to get him focused back on path where it needs to be uncomfortable to get off to like if he is not focused on the first barrel it needs to be uncomfortable and then like the most peaceful comfortable best place to be is on the path to that first barrel so I did this several times and there were two different times where he kind of like drifted off path where he's like oh yeah just whatever but I mean I set him up and shaped him up and just kind of sent him, you know, at a, at a, at a trot and then at a lope. And, um, but I didn't micromanage him and I just want to say, Hey, you show me, um, where you know to go. And I, like I said, I had my body and my focus on path. It's not like I was looking straight ahead or something. Cause that would be telling him to go straight, but I'm like, follow my focus. And two times he, he, what didn't do it. And so again, I made it uncomfortable by just using my leg and coming in and redirecting him and making, giving him a sense of urgency to find what was correct and to, to like seek that barrel and um, get into position like instantly. And then as soon as he did, oh, I made a big deal about it and really praised him and let him rest and we got there. And so, but it was, um, sometimes you don't really know, you can feel so much going slow, but sometimes you, um, when you really put top end speed to it, that is the ultimate test. And we definitely put a little bit of speed to things um, over the weekend. And so it was really good and really revealing. And so so uh, he needed, needs to be a little more hooked on the first barrel. We're going to work a little bit on that this week. And then I think that we need to just continue working on um, engagement on the other two barrels. One thing I did in my exhibition was I tried to just ride him with a little bit more contact to sort of keep him a little bit more gathered. And um, so I did that in my exhibitions to kind of help keep him sort of his body sort of compressed. And um, again, I was really looking at, I'm really looking into making some adjustments to headgear for him too, um, because he tends to over flex at the pole. And so it's actually really easy for him to, hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. You'll have to tell me in the comments, it's a little bit breezy. I'll might, maybe I'll head back to the barn. So he tends to overflex at the pole. And if our horse is doing that in their general riding, I mean, we can undo that. It's something essentially that they've learned, but it takes a little more, um, if it's kind of like a really deeply ingrained default habit, it takes a little more undoing to uh, pull that, you know, d disassemble that habit in an actual run. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of going the opposite direction that I've gone before. Um, because anything, any sort of headgear I've used that I wanted to try and encourage um, lift with, 
will actually just cause him to oftentimes like over flex. So less is more at this point. I almost actually want him to just, I just want to allow him to have his head higher than I would, that I maybe allowed him or taught him in the past so that he can have his, um, that will help um, elevate his withers and uh, lower his hind end. And then I'm really trying to uh, choose something that will uh, discourage him from um, over flexing at the pole. So again, you know, that's something that we can teach them and something that isn't 100% bit dependent, but it definitely plays a part. So, hi Ellen. So, I'm a little bit out of breath because I was running to the house, running back with the ice boots. I had to turn water on and so forth. So, that's where we're at. It was an amazing weekend. Um, we've got just a couple more rides for the final preparation. Um, the big thing is is that you can really accomplish a lot in uh, just a couple rides to help prepare yourself for competition, but the best thing to do is to work primarily on your horse's mind and not overdo it with their body because sometimes if we try to cram and jam too much training into those last couple rides before a big competition, we end up actually triggering some inflammation and making them a little sore, and then they're not gonna really perform at their peak anyway, where if they're absolutely feeling their best, they might actually perform better than they would have without any of that ramming and jamming. So that's kind of a balance and something to keep in mind. So I'm going to really try to go easy on his body this week, but get intense between the ears with him. And he is an intense between the ears individual, definitely. So, yeah, um, Ellen. So, um, as far as undoing the overflexing at the pole, um, I definitely, when it now that we're, you know, like I said, it's the final countdown. I only have a couple more rides till I actually make a run. I'm just choosing some different headgear to um, help discourage him from over flexing at the pole but on an everyday basis what I do is that like I um I basically don't release like even if I'm riding so I don't over I make sure I don't overbid him for one and then I just make sure that if I'm making contact and he assumes that um, I want him to over flex at the pole then I just don't release there I don't reward there anymore and so what I might do is um, I'll just maybe put my leg on them and ask them to go sideways or arc around me or kind of just un, like interrupt the pattern and not really release my hands until they elevate or get put place position themselves where I want them to be and then I'll release them. So, you know, they learn, um, it's the release of pressure that they learn from and so we just have to find a different release point in order to teach them something new that we want them to find a different position and that's the comfort place. So, good question. So, I'm just catching up on Charlotte's comment here. Awesome! That is so good to hear, Charlotte. So, you found that sweet spot. <laughs> that is so perfect. And it is such a fine line, isn't it? She was just mentioning in the comments about how she developed a habit of going to the horn too soon, going to the first barrel, and sitting too soon, and her horse was raiding too soon. And then went to two hands, and then it was uh, her horse wasn't raiding enough. And then finally found the sweet spot, and it all came together with a second place in the 1D. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You bet, Ellen. I'm happy to share. So thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I hope those little that little tip on the first barrel is helpful. Again, um, you can go to the bit.ly link, first barrel fixes. I'll post it in the comments and um, get my five free exercises for a flawless first barrel. And um, those exercises, that exercise that I, that meant incredibly, uh, incredibly intense mental exercise to really get your horse magnetized to the first barrel is in a version of it is in both of my exercises books so um, 
And again, those are at 51barrelracingexercises.com and 50barrelracingexercises.com. So I hope those tips are helpful for the first barrel. I mentioned my, um, my cool down routine, what it looks like today, and everything we're doing um, to get his biomechanics really fine-tuned as much as possible, all in preparation for next weekend. So I hope that um, is helpful to you. And I'll be back uh, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Central for Q&A Tuesday, and then as usual Wednesday morning here again with Pistol at 8.30 a.m. Central. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.